good afternoon myself dr kajal vyas i would like to welcome you all to the to the today's physio tv session breath an effective tool for muscle relaxation it's my pleasure to welcome and introduce our today's speaker sucheta kadethankar ma'am she is a yoga teacher student and teacher of yoga philosophy yoga therapist and tedx speaker she is also a co-founder of koham school of yoga offering formal yoga education yoga teacher training courses she is also a founder of koham fit that offers strength and yoga sessions online as well as offline she is a passionate yoga teacher having deep interest in ancient indic wisdom and loves to integrate yoga philosophy while practicing yoga postures on the mat she has become the first indian to walk across 1000 miles of the mongolian gobi desert to have a limca book of records she was noted among 32 young achievers of india by india today in 2012 she ran several marathons and ultra marathons participated and won adventure races she worked full time in it for 13 years and then left it to explore her passion about health and fitness and landed ultimately into choosing yoga i welcome you ma'am over to you thank you so much dr kajal and uh, thank you for inviting me uh, and giving me this opportunity to share uh, whatever i know about yoga and i'll be glad if that proves to be of any help to you so thank you very much uh, today i have chosen uh, the topic as breath an effective tool for muscle relaxation so when it comes to uh, yoga the kind of picture that we visualize uh, in front of our eyes is someone probably sitting in meditative pose or uh what we visualize is someone bending and twisting and uh, uh doing some um complex kind of uh, postures so these are the two things that we generally have in uh, mind whenever we utter this word uh, yoga and uh, of course none of that is uh, wrong i won't say that but because that is how uh, modern or contemporary yoga looks like and that is what has uh, reached uh, to us uh, for the last um, few decades uh, but if we understand the whole philosophy behind yoga the objective behind yoga then we will obviously come to know um, that yoga goes beyond the yoga postures that is asan or what we know of yoga the pranayam it goes beyond that so i would like you all to take you uh, say probably 2500 years back when uh, the famous sage patanjali who we all know of and have heard uh, of his name because of yoga of course so when patanjali described yoga when he wrote his book called yoga darshan when he described yoga he used a sutra or aphorism which told us yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha that means yoga is the cessation of the fluctuations of our mind so patanjali did not use the word asan or posture anywhere in his whole yoga darshan this text which contains 195 sutras so while describing yoga he never said that yoga is about asan but he described yoga as the tool that can enable you to stop or reduce the fluctuations in the mind so basically what he was telling us is that yoga is about calming your mind so in simple uh, language and we always hear that yoga is this mind body connection mind body connection and it is very difficult to understand how 
this mind and body connects together because either we are doing the postures which are completely physically oriented it's a physical practice or we are probably trying to get into meditation which is very very tough uh, to do so those who have probably attempted to sit in meditation would know how it how tough it is to just sit with closed eyes and probably you know just try to meditate upon some object and that thought itself sounds very vague and complex and not very easy to comprehend so this is where we uh, keep oscillating between when it comes to yoga the postures part or the meditation part now if we understand our whole personality or existence and try to club some yogic wisdom which comes to us from ancient texts and some kind of modern uh, knowledge that has come to us from modern sciences then we can easily say that our whole existence is at three levels so we exist at the level of our physical body which is uh, made up of the skin and the bones and the flesh blood muscles tissues everything that is contained within this frame of what we call as body so whenever we say that i exist we exist we are necessarily thinking that we exist as bodies so we walk and jump and uh, move around as bodies so that is one level of existence so if i say that this whole piece that we carry with us or that we call as us as me the body is controllable right so this whole body is completely within my control so for example right now the movements that i am doing with my fingers isn't it the blinking of my eyes i can easily rotate and turn my neck all of these movements are under my control so right now if i ask you to just raise your right arm up you will understand what is to be done if i say you know just drop the chin down take it closer to the chest you will understand how to do this movement so we can say that our body is controllable the movements of the body are under our control now i told you in the beginning patanjali said that yoga is about stopping the fluctuations of the mind so fluctuations of the mind means movements of the mind now on one hand when i am saying the movement of the body is controllable if i ask you is the movement of the mind controllable then it will be very tough to answer because all of us will surely agree that mind is not controllable it is not easy to control the movements in the mind so if it is so tough to control the movements of the mind and patanjali is telling us that yoga is about stopping the fluctuations of the mind how do we achieve yoga it is so difficult and so non reachable like it is not accessible so everyone would think that it is so tough to achieve but in between your body and your mind there is the second the middle level of existence so i was talking about three levels at which we exist one is the body level the third is the mind level which has probably our emotions the way we feel the way we think our opinions that we have all of these things that we can put in the container of mind and then in the center in the middle there is this layer which is of breath and this breath is something which is semi controllable i can say so now we have got these three levels the first level is of body controllable in our control 
we can contract the muscle we can extend the muscle lengthen the muscle twist into the spine or do back bending we can do forward bending we can do side bending all sorts of movements in all the possible planes we can do so that is controllable second level is breath which i am saying is semi controllable and third level is mind which is not easily controllable or we can easily say it is uncontrollable but we do want to take it or bring it under some control now if we have to then reach the mind which is so difficult to control how are we going to reach the mind then we can reach the mind via our breath so from the control level which is the body part we make use of that to do some postures and then we make use of the tool which is called breath which is nothing but a fuel that makes our system run so we use that fuel to reach the mind so we use something which is semi controllable to reach the mind now i will try to explain how and why do we need to uh, think of our breath so much so now i think till this point we are clear and we know that this is controllable this is semi controllable and mind is uncontrollable now yoga also says something as follows yoga says chale vate chale chittam nischale nischalam bhavet that means there is a close connection between the movements of your body breath and mind the movement your body moves your breath obviously is going to move so obviously if i am sitting quietly the way i am sitting right now my breath is at a certain speed the moment i probably just stand up only that movement from sitting to standing is going to cause some kind of fluctuation in my breathing pattern if i start running again it is going to cause some kind of change in my breathing pattern now yoga is saying chale vate vat means breath and chitta means mind so yoga is saying chale vate chale chittam nischale nischalam bhavet this means when your breath chale means moves your chitta your mind also moves and when your breath that is vat becomes nischala means not moving then your chitta or your mind also does not move so that means if we have to calm the mind we have to make use of the breath see it never happens that you are very happy you are very quiet and joyous and satisfied and content and your breath is running fast it doesn't happen like that if you are mentally very calm and quiet and peaceful then your breath is also very peaceful calm and quiet but if you are mentally very disturbed depressed angry annoyed any of these your breath is probably running fast or it is very shallow like that so chale vate chale chittam nischale nischalam bhavet breath and mind are related body and breath are very very closely related now let us see what happens when we experience any kind of pain in the body so when we are experiencing any kind of pain joint pain pain due to or discomfort due to some kind of muscle spasm muscle pull any of this uh, pain yoga says that merely treating the physical symptoms is not going to help you it will only help you to certain extent we need to also go towards the root cause of that pain which most of the times lies in the chitta or the mind 
yoga believes that your body keeps all the score of whatever you are thinking and feeling in the language of yoga breath is something that produces more or reduces the energy which is also known as prana now this prana this pranic energy is nothing but vital force which makes all the systems run efficiently within our body there are five types of pranas that is one is called prana which moves in upward direction in the body the other one is called apana which moves in downward direction in the body so basically this type of uh, vayu which is called prana vayu it governs anything that comes into your body so what is coming into your body or into your system your breath is coming into your system your food is coming into your system right also what is coming into your system is your thoughts which are which you are constantly taking in through the transactions that are happening all the time with the world around you so whenever you are in the state of wakefulness whenever you are awake there is always an exchange that is happening even though you are not talking even though you are actually not transacting with money there is exchange happening at your thought level so you are taking in some thoughts so this prana vayu takes care of everything that you receive in so basically if this prana vayu is functioning properly then you will be wise enough naturally to take in wisely you will have good ability to weigh what is coming in and you will also know what to stop and not allow to come in so that is prana vayu now apana vayu what is what it does is it has a downward movement so basically it governs all sorts of excretion whatever you want to push away push out from your system so what is it that you are pushing out of your system body again your breath because you are inhaling and you are exhaling also inhaling and exhaling both are very very important then food waste product through excreta that is also something that you want to push out urination you want to push out similarly unhelpful negative thoughts that you want to push out if you are carrying all those unhelpful negative thoughts then there is going to be indigestion even here in your brain in your mind the way we think of indigestion or not able to push out the waste products out of our body like food through excreta we also need to think of the waste stage at thought level that probably we are not able to push out or let go you know we always say that one must learn to let go why do we say that because it is the toughest thing to let go a simple passing negative remark that your friend passes it is very tough to push it out of the system to let go and now let's understand now for our today's topic only prana and apana we will talk because otherwise if i go on talking about all the vayus then it will take a lot of time but we will only think of these two types of uh, vayus uh, which are related to breath so now see what is happening here what happens when there is contraction in the muscles there is pain and what do we do or what is it that should happen to release or to get rid of that pain the muscle has to relax isn't it so a contracted muscle a shortened muscle 
has to either gain its length back or basically it has to just relax and that is what we all do when we try to probably give some yogic posture or of course some kind of physiotherapy depending on the uh, goal but we are talking about muscle relaxation uh, today so now if we are thinking about this then see what is exactly happening here the muscle is not ready to let go the muscle has holding on to something or the muscle is in the state of contraction that means it is holding certain kind of position and not ready to let go of that position and this is when this apana comes into picture now i told you apana is about pushing out exhaling pushing out or letting go what is not needed in the body in the mind in the brain completely letting go so most of the times these kind of spasms or tightness in the body which cause some kind of pain they are created in the body as a result of some prolonged state of mind again remember the shloka that i told you chale vate chale chittam nischale nischalam bhavet i told you when your vata or your breath moves your mind moves your breath stops your mind stops and when your body moves your breath moves your body stops your breath stops so there is direct connection between your body and mind through the breath this is what we are trying to understand here now when a person is very very fearful okay he is you know always in a state of worry about probably future or security of the family financial security this that is worried no corona aaya abhi do saal ye nahi hua theek se business nahi hua ye nahi hua all the time worried it is just by nature that person is like that it happens right or another person is very open minded fearless confident now if we just consider these two opposites what is going to happen to them this person who is all the time worried is anxious has fear has insecurity have you ever seen a person like this having a very strong looking posture where the chest is broad and open the shoulders are wide and open and that person just walks in with confidence it doesn't happen like that that person who is insecure or fearful has a posture where he is shrinking his chest the shoulders are drooping you know there is rounded back the muscles in the neck are very 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 tensed because he's like this you no know, like down all the time whereas a person who is very confident you know very very fearless would surely have the shoulders rolled back and chest wide and open and he will walk in with confidence but then what is happening is because of this posture the spine is extra curved and there is tightness built up here so what i am try this is a very simple example that i am giving it is always not so straight forward once we start understanding more of yogic psychology not just philosophy we also start understanding why a posture is like this and what could be the hidden thought pattern or mental state that person is staying in so if a person is like that for most of his or her life then these sort of changes are going to happen in the postures and so some kind of tightness will start developing in certain part of the body if we understand this connection we are able to start understanding what is happening inside the brain or the mind of that person which is causing this tightness in the body and both of these people want or rather need 
to learn to let go because both of these type of people i'm just giving you two extreme examples they are holding on to something in their brain a person who is very confident go getter type is probably holding on to a belief that probably i should never fail i always want to succeed even that is something which is holding and always holding is tightening it is not relaxed holding is never relaxed when you are holding on to something you are obviously tightening so in terms of body you are tightening some muscles when you are holding in terms of mind you are if you are holding on to some thought then you are not flexible obviously see we are talking about the same language we are using the same language you are rigid here you are also rigid in the body you are flexible here you are also flexible in the body the other person who is very very fearful is also holding on to that insecurity it may the reason could be anything some past incidents or anything anything could be the reason we don't want to get into the reason but because of that there is this holding which is causing the tightness in the body and so to connect now the body to the mind we release something in the mind suddenly that tension in the muscle is released i have experienced this in the yoga class where a person suddenly feels so relaxed i have even had experiences where a person just broke out and started crying because she just felt that some some release just happened while practicing the posture and why did this happen is because that person was focusing on the breath and that is where we come to the importance of the breath i just try to give you the background and now when it comes to breath i told you apana is about pushing out letting go when we learn to exhale completely and focus on completing our exhalation we slowly slowly start experiencing relaxation in the body and that relaxation is overall relaxation that's because we are learning to exhale that means we are learning to let go it is very easy to take in to inhale what is coming to you you just accept take in but letting go of what you don't need also difficult we always have been taught to save to preserve to conserve for emergencies so all of that is is saved here and so we don't let go but if we start focusing on our exhalation more then this release starts happening and for that you need not really be in a yoga class or be into a physiotherapy session if we are in general start becoming aware of how we are breathing especially how am i exhaling am i exhaling fully or before i complete my exhalation i am starting to take my next breath if we start becoming aware of this process things become very easy and we are in general in a state of relaxation at the level of the thoughts and the brain and the mind and which starts reflecting in our body also so there are a few practices that one can easily do or uh, in a session one can um, suggest to the clients so the first practice is very simple the first practice is ask the person to sit not in cross leg position the way i am sitting right now that person could be sitting on chair also but let that person sit in a very very calm and comfortable position making sure the spine is erect and not really like leaning on the chair could be supported with pillows or any other support then you just ask that person 
So start counting the breaths. So give two minutes and simply start counting the breaths. So this simple practice of counting the breaths, what is this going to do? The moment you start counting your breath, internally what has happened is you have withdrawn all of your senses. You have withdrawn them, all of your senses which are outturned, they are outward oriented. They are trying to take everything in from the outside. You are withdrawing those senses and you are directing the senses inwards because you are starting to count your breath. Now you start counting the breath, give him two minutes. Tell that person, if you miss counting any breath, start from one again. So don't stay there again, remembering whether I was at 19 or 20 or 18. Start counting from one. The moment you do this, your senses are withdrawn and then they turn inwards. I always feel that our breath is like a very uh, naughty child. So what does a naughty child do? A naughty child, when he's you know, doing something that he or she is not supposed to do. And if we just look at that child who is busy doing something naughty, what does that child do? He just puts aside everything and sits quietly. So our breath is like that. When the breath is just haywire and we are not really understanding what's happening. For example, right now, when I'm talking, I'm also breathing, but I'm not aware of how am I breathing. The moment I close my eyes and start observing my breath, start looking at my breath, the breath slows down. So counting is basically nothing but slowing your breath down. When you slow down the breath forcefully, you're also inhaling and exhaling forcefully. Like this is not what we want. Just sit normally, breathe normally without altering anything in your breathing pattern. Simply pay attention to the breath. Start counting the breaths for two minutes. You can try this. An extremely effective tool to relax the whole body through breath. Now the second stage could be after you have counted your breaths. Second stage, ask that person to reverse count the breaths. So start from any count of your choice, an odd number, say 19, 29 or 23 or something like that. And ask that person to count the breaths in reverse order, starting from 23, then 22, 21, 20, up to 1. Now how to count the breath? It is up to you. You can set your rule. So you can say that inhale is one, exhale is two. Or you can say inhale and exhale together makes one round. Anything that really does not matter. So that's the second stage. Start reverse counting. It is going to take your senses more inwards because you have added something, some uh, parameter, additional parameter to it. The third stage is you pay attention to the duration of your inhalation and exhalation. In this practice, you can give counts. So first ask that person to close the eyes and start understanding what is the duration of inhalation, what is the duration of exhalation. So let that person count in the mind. The tempo could be anything. You can say one, two, three, four, five. So just keep on counting in the mind. Understand when your inhalation is beginning. Start counting. Understand when the inhalation ends. Stop counting. Understand when the exhalation begins. Start counting. Observe when the exhalation stops. Stop counting. 
so become aware of the duration of inhalation and exhalation that is the third stage fourth stage you give counts and ask that person to equalize inhalation and exhalation so probably inhale in 5 seconds exhale in 5 seconds so you start counting for that person inhale 2 3 4 5 exhale 2 3 4 5 inhale 2 3 4 5 exhale 2 3 4 5 like this you can do up to 6 to eight rounds at a time because that is generally the attention span beyond that probably the person may not be able to focus on the breath it is really tough to stay focused on the breath for that duration so this could be the fourth stage the next stage is what we are really interested in the next stage is when your exhalation becomes longer than your inhalation where we are able to inhale and exhale in the proportion of 1 is to 2 so if that person was able to inhale in 5 seconds and exhale in 6 seconds then probably start with inhale in 3 seconds but exhale in 6 seconds if the person was able to breathe equally inhale 5 exhale 5 then you start inhale 3 exhale 6 if it is easy start inhale 4 exhale 8 so this is how you can build now this is not really pranayam as defined by yoga what i am trying to tell you is just bringing the awareness on the breath will calm the nervous system the moment nervous system calms down it relaxes it is pulled away from the fight and flight response because if your nervous system is constantly in that mode of fight of fight or flight one of your body systems or body part is always going to be in alert mode to fight or to fly away to run away and this state constantly staying in this state is going to cause some kind of spasm tightness something or overuse some kind of injury which happens due to prolonged condition this is going to happen so when we are getting that person become aware of just the breathing process what we are just trying to do is we are trying to relax the nervous system the moment nervous system is relaxed the fight and flight response is toned down the person is relaxed in this uh, at the mental level the body will start responding more quickly and that is how we can use breath as a tool for muscle relaxation so basically there are a lot of other things that we can um that we can uh, discuss but for today's topic i think um this is something that we can focus on and if you try out these four five stages uh, also try out for yourself so try out how it feels to just count the breaths for two minutes take take probably a few seconds just to sit comfortably adjust your position so you need not move for two minutes close your eyes again first become aware of the breath and then start counting then start reverse counting then start counting the duration of inhalation and exhalation and then try to prolong your exhalation than inhalation in one is to two ratio so what i have told is just very very simple breathing i won't say exercises because i really don't want to use that word the moment we say exercises there's some kind of compulsion that is implied there so it's not it is it, these are just i would say breathing rituals that you can do daily 
if possible spend a minute every 2 hours to count your breath one minute every 2 hours so if we say that we are sleeping for 10 hours and we are awake for 14 hours then every 2 hours we can at least take out 6 to 7 minutes where we can spend 6 to 7 minutes just counting the breaths if we are breathing on an average of say 18 to 19 breaths a minute then you can calculate how many number of breaths do we breathe in 24 hours so at least we can count for 6 to 7 minutes and trust me your breath will slow down the moment you start counting so if you are breathing at a rate of 18 minutes uh, 18 breaths per minute the moment you start observing your breath it will probably come down to 12 after 2 hours again if you are uh, observing it will come down to 10 and if you keep on doing it then your natural breathing efficiency will increase and the moment we are breathing calmly our nervous system response is also going to uh, be uh, positive for any kind of muscle relaxation uh so i think this is what i have to uh say uh for today and um thank you again uh, if you have any questions then you can ask me hello ma'am it was a very great session ma'am like knowing about how mind body and emotions are connected all together and the most important part the breath how these are all connected and how it is important to concentrate on breath in the yoga so now i have few questions like in the vayu two vayus you have explained in that how concentration and vayu is connected ma'am like yeah yes concentration and vayu they are not connected what okay. is connected is the movement of that vayu within the body see this vayu is not something in yoga that you can you know show that this is this vayu like i can show this is my finger if yeah. i uh, if i go inside my body i can show this is my kidney and this is this this is that this vayu is kind of an energy which has movement so prana is moving in upward direction from your navel up towards your probably throat and even up to the head while apana is moving in downward direction so this vayu apana vayu which moves in downward direction this energy just pushes some things down so basically so that they can get out of your system so this movement is connected and the function and that movement are closely connected now when you start concentrating or focusing on your breath the stages that i explain to you how we are progressing is slowly slowly first we are just becoming aware of the breath by counting the breath then we are becoming aware of the duration of inhalation and exhalation and then we are increasing the duration of exhalation <laughs> which is nothing but pushing out and like i explained relaxation is related the thought of relaxation is related to letting go the moment you just you know see if you are tensed about something you are holding your breath and when that thing happens what do you do <sighs> why do we do that so forceful exhalation relaxes you and muscle relaxation is nothing but relaxation at the brain level the moment your brain the nervous system is calm the muscles are relaxed so that is how it is connected yeah. thank you ma'am and uh, ma'am like you have explained that uh, it can be done in the sitting position so what would be the ideal position of doing this yeah so i would say the ideal position is something that is comfortable okay okay so you could also do it in lying down position 
because what happens is the moment you say that you know this is the ideal pose what you are doing is you are drawing your senses outwards so you are now now your senses are drawn towards that position which is not important right what is important is your focus on the breath true kyunki kya hota hai if i say that you know you should sit in padmasan then what if a person is not able to sit in padmasan for so many people it's very difficult to sit in cross leg position also that too without moving their probably back starts hurting hip start hurting knees start hurting so that is why there is no ideal position okay to become absolutely comfortable in that position you will be able to focus on the breath because if your focus is on your the position you will not be able to focus on the breath so you can even lie down on the back if keeping the legs straight in the supine position is tough you can even fold the legs so your lumbar spine is completely rested and try to do the same uh, breathing rituals in that position yeah. uh one last question uh, like uh, the whole session of four step so how many times do we repeat this or in one session how how much time should should we take the duration of the session for one session right uh it will be it will just depend on uh, the person if that you can you know just see how that person reacts because the moment you ask that person to close the eyes not every person is even comfortable keeping the eyes closed for long time fullness especially so if you see that you know that person just feels like opening the eyes all the time and looks at you now how, how long then you shorten the duration because then it there's no point doing it so slowly slowly start increasing but i would say at least 1 minute of counting the breaths 1 minute of uh, equalizing inhalation and exhalation and probably as i said 6 to 8 rounds of 1 is to 2 ratio breathing inhale and exhale. so start with 3 to 4 minutes and then slowly up you can take up to 8 to 10 minutes so when i say this it looks like a very short period but when you start actually observing the breath that one minute feels very long when you are closing your eyes and counting the breath and trying not to let your awareness go here and there and everything is focused inside yes yes okay so ma'am thank you so much 5 minutes and then uh, go on increasing thank you for answering my questions ma'am it was a very great session by you thank you so much thank you now thank you so much session now over here thank you thanks for calling thank you thank you thank you sucheta ma'am i would like to thank tushar sir the technical team i would like to thank ket sancheti sir parag sir manisha ma'am and the entire physio tv team thank you so much have a great day thank you bye